Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Today in Sports Betting here with WindowsandWinders.com for Monday, December 28th. I know you're used to seeing two of us with Scott Steen and I, but unfortunately, Scott Steen is a bit under the weather. So for that reason, I'm going to be doing this video solo. Now, I'm not really going to spend much time, you know, I'd say with banter, uh, talking to myself, of course. But for that reason, we're going to dive right in and talk about one of the main games that everyone wants to talk about, the Monday night game between the Buffalo Bills and the New England Patriots. So I'll talk about the spread total and maybe even some props and talk about what exactly is at stake for both teams. So without further ado, we're going to dive right in and talk about the Buffalo Bills first. Bills are laying seven in this game. Over-under has not been up from 44 to 47 at time of recording. And looking at the Bills, they definitely had a lot of, I'd say, goals going into Week 16. Hopefully to maybe get a, sp a shot at the one seed in the AFC, maybe even clinching a two seed in the AFC. Unfortunately, both of those are not going to happen uh, because Kansas City ended up beating Atlanta. So Kansas City, Kansas City got the one seed officially as they are currently 14-1, and one, which was absolutely absurd. And at the same time, Pittsburgh came back and beat Indianapolis, which means that Buffalo uh, cannot clinch anything right now based on this game alone. They already clinched the division. That is already a wrap, so that is not at risk whatsoever. But Buffalo still needs to win this game if they plan on uh, potentially not falling to the four spot in the foreseeable future. Looking at what we have now, Buffalo, if they win this game, is guaranteed to finish either the two or the three seed. However, if they do lose this game, there is a chance they could fall down to the four. So there are some seeding implications, potentially, assuming that Buffalo ends up losing week 17. But at the end of the day, since Pittsburgh won, definitely threw a wrench into Buffalo's goals because if Pittsburgh had lost uh, to Indianapolis and did not make that throw and comeback in the second half, then Buffalo might have been able to get the two seed here with a victory. But that's not the case. Meanwhile, you look at New England. And speaking of motivation, New England has absolutely nothing to play for because they've already been eliminated from the playoffs. They're currently 6-8. and eight. And at the end of the day, you have to wonder what the motivation is going to be for this team. However, New England's been pretty interesting in the sense that even when uh, people thought there was a brief chance they had a shot there when they were at 6-6, six and six, it really wasn't that realistic but people were still expecting New England to potentially throw in the towel after losing to Houston, and then they ended up rallying to beat the Cardinals and the Chargers back-to-back -back games. So New England's been kind, of in, been kind of weird when it comes to the lack of motivation, but Belichick and company preparing a good enough game plan to get the job done. The, you have to ask yourself, is seven points too much here in Gillette Stadium? I'm not sure if it is. The reason why I'm asking is because New England has already experimented with the likes of Cam Newton all year long. Now that they've officially been eliminated from the playoff picture. New England could easily just try to throw in some bench players, try to clinch a better draft pick at this point because there's really nothing to play for. And Belichick, I don't exactly think is uh, going to be, I'd say, putting all of his eggs in the Cam Newton basket and company moving forward now that he can evaluate the other talent on the roster. I think it's all safe to assume that Cam Newton will not be back next year after what's happened this year. I know he has a decent amount of rushing touchdowns, but considering the fact that we're in week four, uh, we're in week 16, and Newton only has five passing touchdowns, and he's played basically every game. That's a problem right there. I think Newton's easily going to be gone. I don't know if another team is going to sign him. His arm looks completely shot. So New England, I'm not – Newton will start the game, but it, would it surprise me if he struggles early, they bring in Stidham and keep Newton on a short leash before pulling him? Really wouldn't because I feel like New England should probably experiment with the depth chart and see where they can rebuild for next year and what positions they'll need in the upcoming draft. So I uh, expect New England to potentially pull Newton early in this game, assuming that he struggles, which he probably will. Uh, the reason why Buffalo's defense has been playing a lot better lately, if you've looked at the recent performances, they had a lot of issues earlier in the year. However, they have given up 17 or fewer points in three of their last uh, – sorry, they've given up 19 or fewer points in three of their last four games. So the defense has definitely found a bit of a groove lately. And I think that will definitely pay dividends against a New England team that has nothing to play for and is definitely a challenge when it comes to throwing the ball. But another thing that you have to mention for New England, the I'd say the bright spot of this team, despite the fact that their offense has been anemic all year long, is the defense, which is only allowing 21.5 points per game. However, Stephon Gilmore is obviously out for this game, so they're going to be missing the number one corner. That is definitely an issue because Stephon Diggs is a serious threat for Buffalo, and New England now does not have their premier shutdown corner to take care of business in this game. Plus, Buffalo has been just really great offensively over the last month or so, as they have scored at least 26 points in each of their last five games. So offensively, they've been great. 
I think that Buffalo should be able to move the ball. They struggled in the opener, or, the, or in the first meeting, I should say, against the um, against the Patriots. But at the end of the day, the weather was awful in that game, and Belichick definitely threw some unique looks at Allen, who struggled. But since New England's going to be missing their best corner, and since you have to look at the matchups here and the weather is supposed to be fine, so I think that Allen and company should look pretty solid against this New England defense. And New England's offense is a lost cause. This offense is awful. Uh, I know that you can say, well, maybe they'll run it down Buffalo's throats, maybe. But I just simply don't see it. Because I think at the end of the day, everyone knows that if they just dare Newton to throw it down the field, he won't be able to do so. And Buffalo, I think, will try to stack the box accordingly. So, overall, looking at this matchup here, you have a decent amount of money to the over as it's gone from 40 – it's up to like 47 now – I'm going to lean to Buffalo minus the seven. Not exactly thrilled with the seven. I kind of wish it was still at six and a half, but I can't back New England here. Uh, there's such a motivation issue. I know that you might argue some players are playing for pride, stuff like that. But Buffalo has so much more at stake at this point, even though they can't exactly clinch a seating spot. They definitely don't want to fall in the, in the standings, and uh, they want to gear up for a Week 17 matchup there against Miami. But looking at New England here, there's really just not much to like. The only thing that you could argue about liking is the defense, but now with Gilmore having the injury, that's definitely going to create a serious blow to that defense, and I just simply think they won't be able to overcome it. So for that reason, I'll lean to the Bills, but in terms of the over-under, I'm actually kind of leaning to the under here. It's uh, just a matter of thinking that New England's offense isn't good enough to actually get the job done here. Now, Buffalo could go for 30-plus, wouldn't surprise me. But I can't back this New England offense really doing much. Buffalo's defense has looked dialed in, and I simply think that New England should struggle to reach 20 points in this matchup. So if I really had to guess based on, I'd say, a score, if you wanted to do that kind of thing, it wouldn't surprise me if Buffalo wins like 27-17, something like that. That just really wouldn't surprise me. But at the end of the day, I'll lean to the Bills, and I will lean to the under in this matchup. Plus, if you actually want to go for some props, I know that Cam Newton's yardage prop is a little bit low. I think you can make the argument for taking the under in passing yards, especially if you think there is a chance that if this game gets out of hand, they will pull uh, Newton for Stinham maybe a little bit earlier because now there's really nothing at stake. I know Newton's on a minimum contract, so they don't exactly, are, I'd say, have to play him at this point. So New England might just experiment a bit with the depth chart and just take the L, and we'll see what happens. But once again, it depends on game flow. But for me, you know New England's going to want to run the ball, so that'll eat up a decent amount of clock. And Buffalo's offense is still very good, but I do think Belichick will throw some unique looks at Josh Allen to get him a little bit uncomfortable early in this game before they make some adjustments at halftime. But for me, I'll lean to the under. I don't really want to take a total of 47 with New England on the over, and I'll also lean to Buffalo. So anyway, those are my thoughts on the Monday Night Football matchup there for Week 16 between the Bills and the Patriots. Uh, there'll be another video for Scott Selections that I'm going to be doing for the NBA I'm going to be skipping college basketball for that because I really don't like today's card. But anyway, uh, good luck to all of you and your respective best today. Bye, everyone.